Hi, this is Noah with Automus. In this video, I'll show you how to use PowerShell to import mail contacts into Exchange and Office 365 Exchange Online. The problem scenario we have in mind here is if you have a lot of external email addresses that you need to import into Exchange or into Office 365, you don't want to use the Exchange Admin Console to do that. And you go looking for scripts online and you find some, but most of them seem to me to be difficult to use or confusing. The goal of this script is to provide an easy way that simplifies contact import. In the best case, it requires zero configuration, and in the worst case, just a little bit. And it supports both traditional Exchange and Exchange Online in Office 365. It's often said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and I'm not so sure that this picture qualifies for that, but to give you an idea of what's going to happen here, we have a contacts file, that's a comma separated values file there, and it contains all of your information about the contacts that you want to import. Then you have a PowerShell script that you're going to run, and that's going to take that file and translate it into Exchange in your environment, in your network, or into Exchange Online in Office 365. So when you download the files, you'll see that you'll get a few things out of the box here. You'll get a few PowerShell import and cleanup scripts. That's what you'll run to actually do the import. You'll get an example CSV file that shows you how to define your contacts in the file format. You'll get a small configuration file that you may not even have to modify. And you'll get a few other related files that provide a way to automatically discover your Exchange environment and make it so you don't need to install anything on your machine to actually run this script. With that, let's look at what it looks like to run this script. The first step is to get a hold of the download file, which is a zip file that comes from the page where you're presumably watching this video. I'm here on my administration computer, which is a Windows 8 machine, and I'm going to extract this zip folder into a new directory with a name of my choosing. Let's call it import contacts on the C drive. That will zip or unzip all of our files here. And the first one to take a look at is our contacts file. This defines the contacts that we're going to import. So if I open that up with uh, Excel as my preferred way to edit CSV files, you'll notice it looks like a normal spreadsheet. We've got a header row which defines all of the properties of a contact. And then we've got the rows after that with each entry. The two most important um, properties here are A and B in this case, which are external email address and name. Those need to be filled in. They can't be blank or empty. Otherwise, the contact won't be able to be imported. The rest of these properties could be empty if you don't care about the values. For example, if I don't have a state here, or if I don't care about filling in the companies or titles or pager numbers, presumably, that isn't exactly a, a hot item right there these days. One other thing I'll point to you is the hide from address list property. And this one controls whether the imported contact will show up in Outlook and in other places where a global address list would be shown. So if I set that to true, that means hide. So the imported contact will not show up in the list. If I leave it as empty or set it to false, that means don't hide, let them be shown so if anybody searches for my new contact, they will appear in the address list. So once we've got our files um, updated and ready, we can close that, and we're ready to actually import. One thing I'll point to before we start is if you look in my address list here, all, I have all contacts in my domain. I have two existing contacts, and we can actually see that as well if I look in my Exchange Admin Center, here are my two existing contacts. But I want to bring in my whole list that I've got in this file. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you're using Exchange on-premise, you don't actually have to do any configuration beyond downloading and running the file. So what we'll do here is right-click on the file Import Mail Contacts, say Run with PowerShell. And a PowerShell window should pop up, and we should see it start connecting to Exchange. It's going to automatically discover the Exchange server in your environment based on querying Active Directory. So you, need, you do need to run this from a domain joined computer. And then it's going to read our file, and you can see that it says, do you want to import six new contacts into Exchange? 
and it's telling us the Active Directory location that it's going to do that. That happens to be the default location, the user's container. If you don't want it there, I'll show you in a minute how you can configure that path to, to make those contacts drop into a different place or a different OU. But let's say we're okay with it. All we need to just do is say yes, and it goes ahead and imports those contacts into Exchange. We see the import results pop up for us here, and it just tells us for each um, entry in the file what happened, was it successful or not, what the address was, and where that user ended up. So you can see, like I said, this Darren Parker ended up in users lab local here. And he's in the address list, which is default in my Exchange server, all contacts, all recipients, and the global address list, and all contacts. So now if we go over to our Exchange server, we close this out actually. Um, let's refresh. We should see, here we are. We've got all of our new contacts in here. And if we open them up, we should be able to see that they have all the properties that we defined in the file. Initials, alias, contacts, all your addresses and office, your country, even the title and department, that's all there. Um, for things that uh, weren't defined, we'll see that those are left empty. So this particular contact, I believe, did not have a state defined. It's just an empty field here. Okay. And now the other thing we want to check is what our contacts list looks like. And we can go look in our address book and we can see that we have some of the new ones, and but we only have four new ones. I had actually configured two of them to be hidden from the address list, so that's why they don't show up here. What if we decide we later want to remove those contacts? It may be a week down the road and those were temporary, or we just decide we made a mistake, so we can come in and run this remove imported mail contact script exactly the same way. It'll connect, it'll read the file that we generated before that says which contacts were imported, and then it'll prompt us to say, are you sure that you want to remove these six mail contacts from Exchange? It will take them out of both Exchange and Active Directory. We can confirm that, and the contacts will be removed. Again, we have a removal results dialog telling us what happened. Everything looks good. And going back over to Exchange, we should be able to refresh and see that these guys are not in there anymore. So we're left with our original two existing contacts. That looks good. And what if we're using Exchange Online and Office 365? Well, here I am in my Office 365 administration. And here I have no contacts to find. The change I need to make to import into here would be to change my import configuration file. This is an XML file. If we edit that, we can see there's two settings. One is the exchange type, and this is what I want to change. Our example values are down here, and the one we want is exchange online. Replacing the default and saving the file, the next thing we can do is run the file, or run the script again, and this time we should see it prompt us to log into Office 365. So running this file, You can see that I'm prompted to enter my administrator credentials. And the username for us is filled in in an example format. We do need to type in a name at a domain name that corresponds to an Exchange Online Administrator. And then we need to enter our password for that. Based on our username, it should look up our Office 365 account, and it should connect to Exchange and start downloading all of the commands that we're going to need to use to run the import. And now that the commands are downloaded, it's confirming again, do you want to import these six contacts into Exchange? And you can see the Active Directory location is a little bit wonky. It reflects the internal AD structure of uh, Exchange Online. Again, we'll say yes. And again, the same import process will take place. And our import results tell us everything was successful. Going in to look at our results in Exchange Online, we should be able to refresh and see these displayed as well.
So there they are, everything is good, and we can also run the reverse process to remove those out of Exchange Online in exactly the same way as we did before. We can run. It's going to, once again, prompt us for our username and password. And then connect and do exactly the same thing. Everything looks good. Let's check in the admin console to make sure everything was removed. And we're good to go. I mentioned that new contacts will be by default imported into whatever Exchange expects as its default container. As far as I know, that's usually the user's container, which is built into Active Directory out of the box. Let's say that we actually wanted to put our contacts into a different organizational unit that we create. I'm going to create a new OU. I'm going to call that testing. So now I have my testing OU. I want my new contacts to be placed in here. What I need to do to make that happen is look at the properties of this. And if I enable my advanced features in my users and computers snap in, I should be able to right click, get the properties of testing, look at its attributes and see the distinguish name. This is what I want to copy. And now if we go into our configuration file, open that back up and we can edit the import directory location. By default, it's empty. So all I need to do is paste my copied distinguished name in there. And now th that is the location where the, the contacts will actually be created. So save this file, and then we're going to run it again just to make sure that's the case. Notice that it's now telling us it's going to put our contacts into this testing OU, which is exactly what we wanted. And the results confirm they are in the testing OU which we can just validate by going and refreshing our directory. There they are. One last thing I'll show you is what happens when somebody runs this script who doesn't have the correct permissions in exchange to actually import contacts. Here I am on a junior admin's workstation, and he has the files. He's extracted them to his folder, and he's ready to actually attempt the import. He does the same thing that I did running the PowerShell script, and it'll connect to Exchange as well. But what we should see is a met, um, the trace log pop up and tell us that we started connecting, we started discovering and confirming things, and oops, it looks like our junior admin, Nigel, here does not have permission to create contacts in Exchange. Um, it's telling us that we need to actually have him in a role that includes recipient management. And in Exchange, that is, at least in Exchange 2013, the recipient management role. But you could have a custom role that includes a, these permissions as well. So if you run into that issue, you know that your account doesn't have the, the necessary permissions. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions or problems with this, just get in touch. And thanks for watching.